A smoky longhouse, the sound of a fire crackling and fat sizzling off a haunch of venison, mugs of mead being quaffed and sagas being recounted. Every day was a feast in the world of the average Viking, right? Well, maybe not so much. The typical diet of a Viking was seasonal, varied, and apparently really quite indulgent at times. While we may be preoccupied with healthy fats, the Mediterranean diet, and getting enough vitamins in our daily nutrition, the Vikings were a lot less concerned with going keto and far more interested in getting enough calories. Vikings lived in cold climates and needed food with high fat content to give them the energy they needed to keep going, particularly during the harsh winters. The Vikings weren't just eating meat straight off the bone though, and their diet was really varied, including vegetables and fruit, as well as fish, cereals, and milk products, and even natural sweeteners like honey. Although Vikings were excellent traders and were able to import certain items like plums or walnuts, a lot of their daily meals would have been grown or harvested in their immediate location. Welcome to the Viking Vault. Food in Saga and Song. Sagas are a great source of information about the Viking period, but we always have to take them with a pinch of salt as they date to a few centuries after the end of the Viking era and we don't know how accurate these are as sources of information. It's more accurate to look at the archaeological record to see how Vikings truly ate. However, it's still interesting to see how food featured in Viking poetry and stories, and it can give an indication of attitude towards the average Viking diet. In the Poetic Edda, there is a flating poem called Harbarsluju, where Thor matches wits with a ferryman as he needs passage across an inlet. In the poem, the ferryman, who's actually Odin in disguise, gets the better of Thor and doesn't ferry him across the bay, showing that even the gods don't always get their way. In the poem, Thor tried to offer the ferryman food in exchange for passage, saying, Ferry me over the sound and I'll feed you in the morning. I have a basket on my back with great food in it. I ate plenty before I left home. Herrings and porridge, I got my fill. The Arabic writer Al Tatushi visited Scandinavia in the late 10th century, keeping a record of his travels while there. He described what the inhabitants of Hebede, Denmark, ate, drank, and did. Al Tatushi wasn't very impressed by what he saw because although we now see Hebede as a thriving port town, he described it as a poor town that, quote, mainly ate fish which exist in abundance. He was referring to herring in this case, which was a thriving industry and a main source of protein and income for many Vikings. For the English Christians, the Viking diet was not one to copy. They disapproved of the Viking tendency to eat horse meat during lean times and the way that the Vikings ate and drank too much. That being said, even a poor Viking would have eaten better than an English person of the same social standing. So maybe they were just a bit jealous. Either way, Norway eventually brought in laws that banned eating horse meat as it was connected to pagan rituals and so that practice died out. Natural sweeteners. With global trade of food, we're spoilt for choice when it comes to our sweet tooth. But the Vikings didn't have access to sugar or syrup, and so they had to find sweeteners in other ways. One of the easiest ways to add sweetness was to add in fruit and berries such as raspberries, bilberries, plums, and apples. As far as we can tell, Viking farmers focused on crops and grains that could be used for main meals and didn't grow fruit for consumption. Instead, it seems as though they foraged for wild growing fruit like cloudberries and raspberries and then enjoyed these treats either fresh or dried. One of the delicious sounding sweet treats from the Viking Age is a warm flatbread slathered with honey and fruit, washed down with mead or buttermilk. Protein. Sources of protein were incredibly important to the Vikings as they needed the calories to be able to carry out their everyday tasks. A typical Viking farm would have kept livestock that we'd be familiar with today. Sheep, goats, cattle, pigs, and horses. Pigs were particularly useful farm animals as they could eat pretty much everything, and so most families would have at least one that would be slaughtered in the autumn. Cows were often kept for multiple years, first to work the land, but also to provide milk which would be used to produce buttermilk, cheese, skyer, curds, and butter. Producing butter was a labor-intensive process as it involved churning the cream for several hours before it would turn into butter, and seems that it was often heavily salted to help it last longer. Marine-based meat. Seal meat was also an important source of food, particularly later in the Viking era when the Vikings had settled in Greenland. While they were mostly farmers, they would have had to adapt to the local conditions, which meant eating a lot of food from the sea. 
It looks like seals were a staple for the Greenlander Vikings, making up about 50 to 80% of their diet by the 14th century. Back in Norway, whales were also on the menu. Vikings would go out in small boats and drive small whales ashore, slaughtering them on the beach and making use of the meat, blubber, and bones in a whole range of different ways. Fascinatingly, whales weren't just seen as a source of food, but also as an indicator of good fishing grounds. Preserving meat and fish was a vital skill, as there would be long periods where nothing could be grown and the entire family had to survive on the supplies that had been laid down throughout the short summer and autumn. Meat and fish were preserved through drying, smoking, and salting so that they could be eaten throughout the cold season, whilst dairy products like butter and cheese made most of the milk. Fruits and vegetables were also dried and stored for the winter, along with large supplies of bread. Although fresh food was hard to come by, the Vikings don't seem to have suffered from vitamin deficiencies as they made sure to have a varied diet. And they weren't wasteful. Each part of an animal was used, from bones to make the utensils, to making sausages from offal and blood to make sure that they didn't waste a single scrap. Culinary Archaeology Learning about what Vikings ate can be challenging. Not much contemporary written information survives from that age, and even less of it deals with the average food intake of a standard Viking. While we can find out some information from the sagas and other medieval books, one of the best ways to uncover the average Viking diet is to look for physical evidence in the archaeological record. From analysing trash pits to looking at the carbon isotopes in skeletons, archaeologists are able to decipher what Vikings ate. For Vikings in the late 14th century in Greenland, that was a lot of seal meat because we can see the carbon isotope evidence in the Vikings' bones. Speaking of bones, traditional archaeology normally involves looking at a lot of dirt and bones. But there's one job that you may never have heard of, but that absolutely exists. The Culinary Archaeologist. And thanks to one called Daniel Serra, we're learning more about the average Viking diet, as well as reviving some Viking A's recipes. Experimental archaeology is an immersive field, and Daniel is no exception. He studies what the Vikings ate, piecing together meals from evidence taken from dig sites, sagas, and cookery books, and then cooking them using traditional Viking tools. In this way, Daniel is able to recreate the meals that we hear about, and then cross-reference the information we have about the climate of the time, and the archaeological evidence that shows what sort of food was being cooked, and then he's able to make educated guesses about how to cook certain dishes. According to Daniel's work, it's clear that Vikings weren't hunter-gatherers who indulged in a carnivorous lifestyle, but were in fact homebodies who grew most of their food. Most people would have easily shared filling meals that were easy to cook and kept you full throughout the cold nights. Meals were often communal and cooked over a hearth or baked in a fire pit using soapstone pots, iron cauldrons, and wooden spoons. Grain was often milled by hand, and the resulting flour would have been made into dense loaves that were delicious eaten warm and drizzled with honey. Although you'd think that roasted meat was the most common way to eat meat, it looks like the Vikings would most likely be eating boiled meat in the form of a stew. Some of the recipes that Daniel has tackled are a savoury porridge with herrings, similar to the one that Thor mentioned in the flighting poem with Odin, wild leaf herb and cheese pottage, and roasted turnips with butter. This is a far cry from the idea of a Viking banquet with kilos of venison and wild boar, but it's backed up by the archaeological record. The bones that are found in Viking dig sites are mostly from the livestock that the Vikings kept on their farms or from fish. Bones from game like deer and boar rarely make up more than 1% of the total find. Fish was a common protein for Vikings as the fish could be caught easily all along the coastline of Scandinavia and then preserved for months. The sea near Lofoten in Norway is a spawning ground for cod, which means that each winter the cod would come to these coastal waters and provide easy fishing for the Vikings. Herrings, eel, and trout were also important in the Viking larder, fished out of the seas and lakes by fishnets or hooks. Through his research, Daniel has also identified a number of vegetables that would have been common on the Viking dinner table. These include turnips and shallots, as well as beans, peas, and a leafy plant called goosefoot. Vikings also grew barley, which was used to make bread and porridge, as well as beer. As water wasn't particularly safe to drink, Vikings brewed both strong and weak beer, one for adults and one for children. Viking Flavours While some of the Viking recipes we've heard of sound interesting, it's even more interesting to consider how they would have added additional flavours to their meals. Vikings would have had access to a lot of locally grown herbs, including dill, parsley, and coriander, as well as wild garlic and leeks. A possibly surprising ingredient is malt vinegar, which, along with mustard seeds and juniper berries, would have added welcome variety to the simple meals that the average Viking ate. So, what did the average Viking eat? They ate better than most of their contemporaries, often having meat as part of their daily meal. 
They seem to have had two hearty meals each day, Viking diet changed with the season depending heavily on preserved fish and meat in the winter, and more fresh vegetables and fish in the summer. Generally, Viking adults ate something called skors, a rich stew of meat and vegetables. The skors was kept on a low simmer for days at a time, adding new ingredients as they came available. This would have been supplemented by fried herring or pork, both readily available to the average Viking, barley bread, and potentially some form of egg dish. Thank you for watching this episode of the Viking Vault. Please do subscribe if you're enjoying these videos as it really does help the channel out in these early days. I'll see you next week for another video and I hope everyone has a great time until then. Cheers.